right, folks, thanks for coming. We'll open up today's press conference with Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Uh, looking back on the film, I mean, the run game schemes, I think one thing that stands out is the athleticism of the offensive line and how it's being used, pulling guys, getting guys in space. What have you seen just in, in that sense from the offensive line and, and, and the ability to, to make big runs by blocking guys in space that way? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to make any you know, conclusions off of, you know, the first couple of games, but, you know, you go off of what you see on film and I think guys first off are playing hard. Uh, they're running to the football, but they're getting to the next level better. I think you've seen that on film. Guys are getting up to the second level better on a few of the stuff, um, you know, that we had organized for this, this past game. And um, you're seeing pad level uh, lower and, you know, guys are, guys are rocking off the ball and, and I think the running backs are running hard, but, um, I don't think we're in any place right now to make any, you know, judgments on where we are. But, uh, but that was what we did on Saturday. Far left, Joe Nugent, WCME. Were you satisfied with the rotation at right guard? Is that something you can see doing moving forward? Yeah, I, I think both of those guys deserve to play. I mentioned that last week, and and they, you know, they both did. Um, you know, we'll continue to evaluate it and grade and, and make sure. But um, we all know we're going to need these guys and. Um, no, I, that's the thing, whether it's Trevion and Quinchon or Austin and Tegra. I mean, they, these guys are team players and, you know, they, they want to win. That's the number one thing here. You know, it isn't about statistics or anything like that. And um, there'll be plenty of snaps to go around. We know that. So, you know, this week we, we got a, a new challenge ahead of us, conference game on the road. So, um, you know, those guys will help each other. And um, we'll see how this week of practice goes and, and, you know, get as we get closer to the game, put a plan together. Robinson, the athletic. When you look back at film or even talk to Jaden, what, what did you see that went wrong in his kickoffs, and, and how do you evaluate that going forward? Yeah, I just talked to him about uh, his mindset, and he gave me some information just about a little tweak that he had, and he's you know either has to make the correction or has to communicate to us that there was you know, an issue. So, um, you know, talked to him for a while though about about that and how much we need to moving forward. Tweak, injury, or just something he changed in his his. Uh, Wait. Yeah, he felt a little something somewhere early, early on, and um, wasn't able to, you know, quite make the adjustment from there. So nothing long term or anything like that. All right, uh, Adam King, WBNS. Coach, uh, getting ready to go on the road for the first time. How much does changing going downtown before the home games help get you prepared, or does it at all to go on the road? How do you change your weekly thing as you get ready for conference play on the road? Here? We try to keep it as close to. Um, our normal routine as possible. Um, yeah, I, I would say that, you know, we do have a little bit more of that feel when we're downtown, that we're on our own and a little bit more isolated, which is good. I think it avoids some distractions uh, as much as we liked being here on campus. But uh, but this is new. I mean, you're going uh, on the road in a conference environment. I'm sure they'll have a great crowd, night game. Um, yeah, they're, they're playing good football. So, um, you know, we, we've got a, you know, you know, face our first challenge on a road, and, and that comes with, you know, a lot of different things. And like you said, new traveling and, um, you know, handling the crowd noise and, and all of the above. So um, good challenge for us. We're looking forward to it. Right next door, Dave Holmes, WSYX. Yeah, so Michigan State's had three close games. You guys obviously haven't had one. I know the goal is not to play a close game. You'd rather win by 40 or 50. But how much does the experience of a close game matter, and how do you simulate that with your guys when you have an experience in real time? I think when you have a young team, I think it's it's significant. I think our guys have played a lot of football and been around a lot of games, different styles of games. So, um, you know, we should be able to adjust pretty quickly. Um, uh, far uh, front row left, Dave Biddle, 24-7 sports. Back to right guard for a moment. When you guys are making a decision like that to rotate, how do you balance, uh, okay, we want to have cohesion up front with the same five guys, get Tegger as much as many reps as possible, getting Donnie back, with also wanting to build that depth with getting Austin in there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, that, but also I think, you know, giving uh, both of them a chance to catch their breath for a series or two is, is actually a good thing for a young player. So um, we look at that during the week. We'll, we'll rotate those guys during the week so that there's, there's chemistry between um, Josh Fryer, uh, Seth, and, and both of those guys when they're in there. And, and I think when you practice that way and then you play that way, you know, there isn't all of a sudden like this chemistry issue or anything like that. As long as whoever's not in the game is really, you know, focused in, seeing the plays on a tablet, seeing the adjustments in, in real time, um, I think that's good. And I, and I do think that is a benefit to having the tablets is although they're not in there getting the rep, they can actually see what happened in the last series and make any kind of adjustments that are going on in game. 
follow up. Is uh, is Tegra definitely the starter there? Or is it a pretty good battle there with, between him and Austin? Or yeah, we're going to keep moving forward just like we just did and, and um, let these guys both play. And um, as of right now, you know, Tegra's Tegra's going to start, but you know, um, you know, they're they're both going to play, and I think they're excited about that. And I and I do think it, it's good for them, especially early on, to to have a series to catch their breath and, and then get back in there. Devin Brown got a chance to get in there and throw the ball around a little bit. What was your assessment of Devin and how he played? Yeah, a couple, you know, the, the third down conversion was good. He did miss a couple throws. So, um, you know, probably not not as much, you know, in the game to really make, make a, a huge evaluation on. But but every play is an evaluation. You know, we're trying to, you know, build that depth. And, and so, um, you know, the development has to keep coming in practice. And, and you know, we get in there in a game, you know, we want to move the ball down the field and score touchdowns. Conference play, these chances to get these guys in the game might be a little bit more difficult to come by. Is Devin still your unquestioned number two quarterback right now? Is that a competition at all still? Oh, it's still. You know, it's. I mean, guys are competing every day in practice. Um, you know, he he would be our number two right now. But yeah, I mean, that that's across the board. Everyone's got an opportunity to to compete and. You know, there's five guys in that room that you know want to get out there, and so to say they're not competing every day wouldn't be right for them. You know, they they got to come and, and bring it and. Um, and so we'll have opportunities today and this week in practice to evaluate him and kind of see where we go. But, but right now he is our two. Right behind him, Andy Baxter, Letterman Rome. Yeah, Ryan, what makes Carnell so valuable when the ball isn't in his hands? Like whether it's perimeter blocking, mm -hmm. pre snap motion, it feels like you guys lean on him for a lot. So what makes him so valuable in those situations? His accountability is, is tremendous. You know, his blocking, his uh, attention to detail, like you said, his route running, the precision of his routes. Um, you know, in. He's had a great guy in Emeka to look up to. We saw Marvin work last last year, but he's he's carving out his own legacy here. I mean, he he's a guy that we look to who um, has become a major part of our offense and, and someone that does a lot of um, a lot of things for us. You know, he's on punt return. He's um, you know running a lot of the stuff there. He's um, extremely talented. You know, running routes and catching balls, and so you can see all that. But he's becoming a, a complete football player and and also a leader. Coach, how much more do things ramp up now that the non-conference is over and you're going into Big Ten play and scout uh, Sparty for it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always about us. So, you know, we always say that the opponent doesn't matter. But all that being said, yeah, going on the road in a conference opponent is a big deal. So, yeah, everything's got to ramp up. You know, and now we're into to game four and we got to keep upgrading each week. So, you know, we got to have a great week of practice and, you know, everything needs to ramp up. Um, I think... You know, first off, I think, you know, Jonathan's done a really good job already of, of establishing an identity there. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, they, they have a, um, you know, really good quarterback, good young quarterback who uh, can do a lot of different things. He can beat you with his feet. He's made some really nice throws, um, you know, in some big games for them and, um, you know, and won the, you know, a game on the road already at, at Maryland, you know. And so for a young quarterback, that's, that's, um, you know, we should give him a lot of confidence. Uh, on defense, they're playing really, really hard. Um, you can tell they're well coached. So um, I, I think he's upgraded in a lot of areas and he's doing a good job. So, you know, we got to, you know, we get, this is a Big Ten road game for us and then we got to bring it. Bill Landis, Kings of the North. Right, you guys have been really explosive passing, just like a lot of shortstop screens and slants and all that kind of stuff. As the offense continues to evolve, would you like to see more vertical shots in the offense, or are you pretty comfortable with where you are now and how kind of precise you've been on the, the shortstop? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I, I think we want to always, you know, be able to run it right at you, run it outside, you know, run it um, or throw the ball, you know, horizontally and throw it vertically. And when you can do all those things, you're putting the defense the you know highest amount of stress as possible. And a, a big part of that, though, is is what the defense is giving. You know, they, you know, if they want to play, you know, real deep and, um, you know, keep it in front, then, then we got to do a good job being efficient with those. If they start to challenge a little bit more, then we got to get behind them and, and run by them. So, um, if you can do all of those things along with you know in the in the in the run game, you know, have the quarterback involved with it. Again, we feel like that's putting a lot of stress on the defense and. Um, but the key is, you know, when they take away something, can you get to the next thing? And and that's that's what's important. But we've worked hard to try to make sure we have diversity within the in the offense. Will had said, in, in, I think in camp that he was trying to work on being a more consistent downfield thrower. He hasn't had a large, I guess, volume of downfield targets just yet. But what what have you made of that so far? Yeah, no, he's I mean, he's really made some great balls and great throws in practice, and um, you know he's. You know, he's really made a lot of progress. He has. So, um, 
long way to go. Still early in the season, but you know, he can make them all, and, and he's done it in practice. And um, and so, you know, I, I think the timing is is continuing to improve. You can just see, you know, the ball's coming out of his hands, and the you know, receivers are maybe even not even out of their break quite yet. I mean, that that's good sign. Those are those are all good signs, and. Um, you know, and our guys do such a great job downfield of going up and getting it too. So there's a lot of opportunity and, you know, a lot of games ahead of us. Tony Gerbman, Buckeye Huddle. How much <laughs> feedback do you get from Will during the week? I know you'll ask, you know, what do you feel comfortable about? But in terms of who he wants to get involved or, you know, what he's seeing from his teammates that, you know, maybe he's giving feedback on them. Like, can we get Carnell involved and stuff, stuff like that? I mean, we always, we always want to make sure that we're getting everybody involved. Now, a big part of that is, you know, whatever it does, whatever it takes to go score a touchdown. I mean, that's the number one thing here. But, you know, we we want to put stress on the defense. How do you do that? You spread the ball around. So that's something we just do naturally. Um, but there's a lot of conversation on a daily basis during the day, conversation on the field, conversation after the field, text messages at night, you know, all those types of things. But most of the conversation is is between he and Chip and, you know, in those meetings. But but I'm right there as well and, and um, you know, just – you know, it's great because Chip brings such a different perspective to the table for us. Uh, but at the same time, there's certain things that, you know, we've seen over the years that we know show up in, in some, you know, some of these you know, opponents that we're playing and, and what's coming down the road in the Big Ten. And uh, Will has his own experience of playing in the Big 12 in those games. So a lot of good conversation there. And, and I think it's all healthy. Has that picked up since the season started or was that something that's been going on, you know, spring or like when did things really pick up in terms of the conversation uh, I don't know if there's any I mean it's always it's always been good um, I think as he started to learn the offense he gets more and more comfortable you know he's able to give more feedback on what he's seeing um, and, and I think it's good to get in here and watch film on your own before the coaches even get to you you know what are you seeing and if he comes in with some different ideas that are in line with us then we know we're, we're you know, we're, we're getting, you know, the mindset correctly. We're teaching it the right way, and he's understanding it. So that's, it's good to get some of his thoughts, you know, on a Monday when, you know, he's watched the film fresh. Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, we haven't talked a ton about tight ends, but you guys are obviously using a number of them. How, to, to the average person, it may not come across, but how impactful are they in terms of what you guys are doing offensively? Well, I think... You know, the tight end position here is, is critically important because it can put a lot of stress on a defense in different ways. Um, the running and the blocking and the, you know, the pass catching and, and all those different things can really uh, create a mismatch for us. And when we're able to get in and out of personnel groupings, we feel like that also gives us a little something. So you, we're always talking about, you know, how do you put stress on the defense? And, and this is another way for us to, you know, to try to do that by, by changing up these personnel groupings. And Having tight ends that can do multiple things allows us to do that. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Spring was interesting for you having to make some hires at times that you necessarily don't have to make hires. How well did you know Carlos Lachlan, if at all, before that situation arose where you had to go find a running back? Uh, yeah, the first time I met him was was on a Zoom call um, during an interview, and um, you know we had interviewed Chip and I several candidates. I think he might have been eight or nine or ten or somewhere along there, and. Um, he almost interviewed us, you know, like he, he had a presentation ready. He gave his drills. I mean, I think we said hello and he ran it from the rest of the way. And it was like, this is our guy. I mean, he was tremendous and then shared with us his story. Now we had done a little background, but to hear the whole story of how we got into the game and his passion and, you know, uh, he knew everything about Chip. He knew everything about me. You know, he had, uh, knew everything about Ohio state going into the interview, like, he, you know, and it was just really, really impressive. And, um, you know, when, when it came to like the run game, you know, under identifying, you know, what the blocking schemes were like, how the, how the running back runs, you know, in, 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 you know, these type of run schemes and what he's looking for. And then how does he drill it and the mindset and mentality. But of all of the things that I liked the most, it was his mindset and his mentality, you know. See, there's a lot of guys had offensive staff where you did have prior relationships with them before, obviously in different roles in your life, right? With him, it just seems like outside guy, you needed to go find a running backs coach. And as you're talking about, that guy just wowed you away. Having that guy who maybe doesn't necessarily think the way a lot of you guys do, how was he added to the room overall when you guys are sitting in those offensive meetings right now? I think some people ask, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned? You know, every year you learn more as a head coach. And, you know, I didn't know Jim Knowles when I hired him. I had never met him before. Um, and the same thing with Carlos. And I think... 
you, what you want to do is you want to go hire the best fit, but you got to, you know, you got to hire the best person for the role in that time. And so you got to be thorough. And it, sometimes it takes more time to make sure you bring in the right person for that, for that spot. And, and we felt like Carlos was that guy. Um, but I think anytime you come in with a buy-in, but also a different perspective, it's healthy for the room, ask questions, challenge, you know, have you ever thought about doing it this way? This is the way we've done it. Show you some clips of film, you know, just to kind of splash the water, I think is great. And I think early on, you got to kind of learn the way that it's, you know, our system works, which she's done a great job of. But even now, just gives little ideas here and there out of practice of things that, you know, he's done at some of his prior stops. Um, and, and that's all really, really healthy stuff. It just gives you perspective, too. Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Brian, we talked so much about the interior and the offensive line, but what have you seen so far from Josh Simmons? I'm sure it's, it's good when you don't hear much from the left tackle, but he's been penalty for eight three weeks. Yeah, I think um, Josh has played um, much more physical. He's um, finishing to the to the ball more. He's finishing to strain more. He's put more time in studying. He's a year into the system, so you know we're counting on him to you know be you know the left tackle that we need to go reach our goals. Still early, but you're seeing progress there. Stephon Price, Neek, Cleveland.com. You read it, Paul? Yeah. Okay. So with, with Travion and, and kind of the, <laughs> the combo that he's had with, with Quinn Sean, um, where have you seen him kind of growing? How do you think he's kind of embraced the, the role of, of splitting the ropes more? I think they've both been excellent. Yeah, and I think that that's um, – people ask all the time, but they, but they pull for each other. And you can see in this game they both had great games. They both were the player of the game on offense for us. And – um, you know, when, when Quinn Sean's got a great run in front of the team, Trey's cheering him on and vice versa, you know. So they, they know uh, what a long season it is. And um, and I think they both make each other better. Dan Hope, Lev Warriors. Ryan, do you expect Tyleek Williams to be able to practice and play this week? And what was your assessment just overall of how the other defensive tackles played against Marshall? Yeah, I think that um, Tyleek's day today. He'll be out there today. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think when you watch the film, there was good play, um, but there needs to be more consistent play. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot to learn from there and, and a lot to grow from. And this is an opportunity to build depth in that room. You know, when, you know, when, when Tyleek, you know, is out there, you know, uh, he certainly makes his impact felt. And just like when we lost Donovan there for those couple of weeks, you know, it was an opportunity. And so you learn about that when you have to step into that role. It's different than when you're, you know, playing 10 to 15 snaps in, in, in a backup capacity to when you're the guy. So uh, good challenge for those guys. And um, I think, you know, everybody in that room would tell you that there was some good plays, but but there needs to be more consistent play. Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 Sports. I just put my hand up and get right in. I uh, want to ask about the defense, just uh, some problems getting off the field on third and fourth down this past week. Was there a consistent theme to anything that you guys saw or some things that maybe future opponents could, could hone in on to, to convert some of those in future games? Yeah, I, every time you get done with the game, you, you evaluate it and try to sort through, you know, what went well and what needs to improve. And, um, you know, there, there's I'm not going to get into all the different things right now, but, um, you know, there was some definitely some plays on third down that we'd like to have back that we'd like to execute better. Where you want it right now, just one sack. This past weekend, it wasn't even out of the regular four man. It was out of the Rushman kind of special package. You know, I think what's important for everybody to understand, um, and, and that includes, you know, JT and Jack and, and our guys, is, you know, if, if an offense decides that they're not going to give up any sacks, they, they can run the ball every play, throw RPO, or throw the, get a ball out of their hand quickly. And so it isn't a game of stats. What you got to do is you got to stop the run. And if the quarterback, you know, is in a situation where he's looking to run quarterback draw or quarterback power or those type of things, we've got to stop the run first. The sacks will come. So, you know, just to go out there and think you're just going to go sack the quarterback if one of the things that the other you know, side of the ball decides is we're not just going to take a five-step drop and hang on to the ball, then those op opportunities aren't going to be there. You have to defend what the other team is trying to do. And so um, 
You know, that's just the bottom line. And, you know, when you have talented pass rushers like that, you know, you, you're going to get some different styles of play. And so we all just have to make sure that, you know, we understand the goal is first is to stop the run. And then secondly, it's obviously, you know, about disrupting the uh, the passing game. But there's different ways to disrupt the passing game. And to think that, you know, we're just going to, you know, guys are just going to drop back pass in a, situ- in a game like that. Um, you know, it's going to happen. The ball came out quick. Um, you know, quarterback did not hang on to it. So, you know, there's a lot of things that come with that. And we could talk about this for hours, but I want to make sure that the number one goal is the number one goal. And that's to stop the run and, and to get off the field on third down, whatever that takes. And it may not be a sack. Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, did you hear anybody uh, from the Woody days about going into the, the tee on that sneak with Will Howard? The tee, well, yeah, Chip brought it out in the spring game, and, you know, that was kind of you know, robust there to show the respect to Coach Hayes and, and um, you know, the way they used to run the ball here. So, um, you know, we wanted to to do that then. Now, you know, that, that formation gives us a little something. It gives us some, um, some balance, and so, you know, we'll continue to build on it as, as the season goes on. Is it, is it, should ran in a lot at UCLA. Was that sort of something he, or not a lot, but he ran it somewhat at UCLA. Was that something he kind of suggested he was something you could yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that was something he's got a little bit of background in. So we, we you know, spent some time talking about it this off season and, and looked at some different things out of it. And um, so, you know, when appropriate, we'll utilize it. Uh, far left, Whitney Harding, WCMH. Hi, Ryan. Um, kind of a left field question. I was going to ask you, have you heard about the story about Michigan State's Armory Smith? and that he's raising his five siblings. I mean, it's just a truly incredible story, and I was wondering what your thoughts were on, you know, what these kids yeah. on a regular go through. Right. And the extra time that he's putting into all of this. Yeah, you know, I, w- I was told um, secondhand a little bit. I don't know all the details, so it would be hard for me to um, comment on it, but but I certainly, um, the, what I've heard, um, you know, have a lot of respect um, you know, for, for that situation and understand that the challenges that I, I can't imagine what that challenge is like, but, and, and everything that it sounds like, you know, as he and his family have gone through. So, you know, that's, it's one of the things that, you know, kind of gets lost a little bit, you know, is that, you know, these are young men and not everybody's, um, has the same family situation or dynamic. And, um, and that's why we always have to make sure we focus on, you know, our, you know, one of our goals here is to raise great young men and to be supportive and, and those type of things. And so, um, you know, again, I don't know all the details, but but certainly, you know, have a lot of respect and, and um, you know, have definitely thought about what that, that means for he and his family. Austin Ward, the podcast. Ryan, just, just last week you were in here talking about with the tackles that, you know, Caden and Will, Jason might have some opportunities and, I don't know if it was a challenge to them for Saturday or if you thought those guys were ready to take on more reps. Did, did what happened Saturday trouble you at all with the depth? Was it, is that just a product of being out there for the first time? Was the depth, is it not where you guys really want to tackle? I don't, I'm throwing a lot out there. No, I know. You're trying to figure out what, what was the evaluation coming out of it. Yeah, I get it. Um, I think... Again, it was it was a mixed bag. You know, do we want to see more consistent play? Yeah, we do. Um, that, with it, like the fourth down stop by Taiwan Malone was a really good play. You know, he took an adjustment that happened in game, and you know that happened on the sideline, and he made it on the field and made that play. I thought he had a really good play in a screen. He put his foot in the ground, redirected, and made a play. Um, but then there's also some some clips of film that you know uh, we got to be better. So. But I think that's sort of I think about when Austin got put into that role in the first couple of weeks here in preseason camp, it wasn't very good because you have to almost recalibrate yourself to like this is what I gotta bring every single play. I can't just it's not just ten or fifteen plays and I gotta bring it every single play. So um, you know, we'll see where that goes this week. We'll see where Tyleek's at. But uh, when those guys do get in there, you know, we're counting on, you know, an adjustment to be made and some progress to be made there. Was was the nature of that game with some of what they were running with the quarterback the heat, the temperature on the field, the rubber melting or whatever, like, did it make it difficult at all? Did, are you, I know that you guys aren't going to ever lower the standard or expectation once you're out there and wearing that uniform, but did it make it more complicated to evaluate when all those factors are in there? No, no, you know, because they're the same for both sides, you know, and, you know, we're, we're not going to make any excuses about that. I mean, either do your job or you don't. And there's a lot of, 
things that can come into play. Like you said, there was some unique schemes in there, but still, ultimately, you did your job or you didn't. You either graded out a champion or you didn't, you know, and I think ultimately we have to make sure that we keep it just, you know, black and white, and that's what it is. And either you did your job or you didn't. You played good enough to win or you didn't. And so there's a lot that comes with that. And, and it's like instant feedback on how your preparation went. You know, how did you practice? How was your meetings? How were your walkthroughs? You know, did you spend enough time watching film? All those things. How about did you get enough rest? Did you hydrate well enough, you know, the night before? So, you know, you got to evaluate all those things, figure out what you did well, enhance them. The things you didn't do, you got to get them fixed. And that's a part of the progress. But you're getting good feedback when you're getting way more reps against you know, the ones than you would typically, you know, if you're playing as a backup. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see where this thing goes. But they've certainly been challenged, and I know everybody in that room is going to work hard to get it to where we need it to be. Uh, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. When you got the four big transfers, Will, Steph, uh, uh, Caleb, and, and Quinshaw, you, you knew they were talented. But it's one thing to integrate them. and sort of, Have they done and been everything that you hoped they would be? And how, how much of an addition has that been? Obviously, it's a big one, but can you quantify yeah. it? I think, first off, it's the culture fit. And I think all of those guys have been ex excellent culture fits. Um, I think when you watch all of them play, they play with emotion. They like to be around this team. You know, there's, there's a play where Seth's running downfield on a, I don't know if it was a screen or one of the toss cracks. and. He's downfield and he's barking at the sideline and he's just having fun. And Quinshawn, same thing is that long run and you just see him jump up. And Caleb's out there. He's got great energy. Will, I mean, these guys, they just like being around this team. And to me, that's like the number one thing because, you know, when you bring guys in, especially here who have put them multiple years in the program, you know, it's it's a little bit of a different deal for your culture. And you got to make sure that you're sustaining a culture during these, these you know, kind of unprecedented times. I think that's very important. On the field, Again, you know, you're, you're seeing what you see. We, we see what we see in practice, but the challenges are bigger, you know, and, you know, we'll kind of evaluate that, you know, as we start getting more of these bigger games under our belt. And Chip coached against Jonathan Smith. Um, you probably don't have any familiarity coaching against him, right? Um, just that first game, I think, when he was at Oregon State, that was the first one, but he had just started there. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, how much does it help to have Chip and to be able to bounce things off him because he obviously does it better? Yeah. Um, Again, I, th I think he's an excellent coach, and, and yeah, Chip knows you know um, him as a coach. Um, you know, doesn't necessarily mean everything they did at Oregon State is what they're doing now. You know, I think they've kind of made some adjustments based based on their pers personnel. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, they they have some familiarity there. And final question is Tim May, Letterman Row. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, just two quickies. Uh, number one, uh, do you, do you feel good where this running game is? That you that you have going into the Big Ten meeting, have you seen the consistency, et cetera? And I know everything's relative based on who you're playing, yeah. who you're blocking, and stuff. Yeah. But what are, what's the indication that this running game is coming along like you envisioned? Yeah, I'm not. I don't feel good about anything. Just that's uh -huh. just my mindset. Yeah, I mean, I don't. You know, I mean, that, and that has to be everybody's mindset. You know, I mean, you start to feel good about something, and complacency can sneak up on you fast. So no, no nobody feels good about anything. I think we're building confidence in it, though. I think the guys. Yeah, I think guys are starting to. Okay, we can get after some people now, and they're starting to have a little bit of fun and say, like, I'm gonna line up against Genshin and get after you. And I think, to me, you know, in, in the way the running backs are running, and you know, that that you can feel that that's that's palatable when you, when you're out there. And so we got to keep building on that. Um, again, bigger challenges are ahead, and, and all that, but um, but but that part has been encouraging, I would say. Yeah, and finishing downfield. The, the, the so I'm saying, like, to me, like that that's more than anything. We want the execution. You got to do your job. You got to grade out a champion. But it's how hard are you playing down the field and finishing blocks and finishing your runs? And um, you know, we saw that here. But again, just to start. And is it amazing to you how, because you've done, y'all have done this. Uh, you look at Michigan State. They didn't just bring in a new coach. They brought in other players. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. They've they've reshaped their roster yeah, they have. and stuff. People are used to like a sequential thing, I think, from college football. But that's not the way it is anymore and stuff. But it, has Michigan State done a good job in that regard? Uh, how would you describe it? Yeah, that? I think so. Like you said, it's year to year more than ever. And yeah. um, they, they've done a nice job. They, I mean, they, they're playing hard and they, and they put some good pieces into it. And um, you know, they're a good team. You know, to, to win that game on a road against Maryland really, you know, is, you, you know, they caught everybody's attention. Thanks, Mary. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you.